Homo erectus, a classic model, a fan favourite among many, and also the star of today's show. Now, where am I going with this? There has been a new discovery, a paper released on the 6th of March this very month, 2024, and it basically says that Homo erecti, plural, were in Europe about 200 to 300,000 years earlier than previously thought. Now, now, you might be like, when was the original date? Yes, tell me. Well, I will. In Spain, in Cima del Elefante, and Vayne, France, there was evidence of Homo erectus activity found dating to around 1.1 to 1.2 million years ago. And this is the oldest European Homo erectus evidence that has been found so far until what I shall come on to next. Now, most people have been speculating that considering that Homo erectus reached the Middle East and Middle Eurasia around 1.75 million years ago and Asia 1.6 million years ago, which is quite a trek from the African continent. They must have got into Europe at some point potentially sooner than 1.2 million years ago, one might assume. However, because we do not have any evidence from an east to west migration, people are speculating that they may have actually gone across the Gibraltar Strait from Morocco up into Western Europe that way, which is quite the feat. I don't think we've got any evidence for boat making by the Homo erectus. Species. So, I don't know, this is kind of speculation at this point, we should say. And this evidence was speculated until one man, Roman Garber, came to save the day. Now, four years ago, Roman Garber, an archaeologist, was thinking to himself, we need to fill in the gaps, we need to find the trail, the path, the route of which Homo erectus took to get from Africa to Western Europe, because this isn't making any sense to me, and I completely understand the man. So he went looking, he went searching, and he found a report from a site discovered in 1974 in Ukraine. This site was founded by Ukrainian archaeologist V. N. Gladolin. They found evidence of activity from 30,000 years ago, from our species, right back to tens of thousands of years earlier by Neanderthals, and a final layer of which showed potential evidence for Homo erectus activity. Now this site, Korolevo, is situated on the Ukrainian-Romanian border. It is on the River Tisa, and it is a quarry of which was previously a river bed that sits on the edge of the Carpathian Mountains near the River Danube. A classic, a known favourite of anyone migrating into Europe. Now, although we've got many, many layers in this quarry, we are focusing on the oldest layer, in which there were 33 artefacts found, what looked to be stone tools made of volcanic rock. Now, there was a problem. This layer had not yet been dated. The oldest layer at 1.4 metres above it was 770,000 years old. Now, although the tools themselves could not be dated, there were several quartz pebbles and quartz within the soil in which they were found that could. Now, they had to use a very high-tech method of dating to find out when these stone tools were buried by the soil. Cosmic rays. Insanity. They basically measured the rate of beryllium and aluminium decay within these minerals using the cosmic rays. And when these rays hit exposed rock on the Earth's surface, they create radioactive isotopes. Now these isotopes, a classic bit of dating, decay at a known rate, and because they know the rate of the beryllium and the aluminium decay, they were able to date this site to 1.42 million years old. That's older than my granny. Now, others say that the dating is not able to be so specific, so they were just saying that it was in a range of 1.3 to 1.5 million years old. And at a latitude of 48.2 degrees, this is the furthest north a Homo erectus site has possibly been found. Also, researchers were potentially saying that glaciers from ice sheets that may have come down later on have potentially destroyed sites, or there are just further northern sites that have not been found. However, this is the first east to west migration evidence that has been found. However, we have some naysayers, of course we do, because the academics just love a scrap. Some say that the methods are not scientific enough. Others say that we have one vital piece of information missing, and that is the fact that we don't have any actual evidence of Homo erectus remains. We have no bones. We have no DNA evidence to show for ourselves, which is very, very unfortunate, but you know, that would be quite a lot to ask for, to be fair. Also, some people say that the error of margin of the dating overlaps with some of the younger sites in Europe, 
and also that these stone tools, which I will later get onto, are badly described. I mean, yeah, but what can one do? Now, as I said, the stone tools themselves are made of volcanic rock and they are of the old one stone tool industry, which is quite a simplistic industry, one of the first to emerge. And they are just blade and cores. They were likely used for stripping hides, cutting meat and scratching things off other things as most stone tools are. However, these tools have a lot of similarities to tools such as the 1.8 million year old site at Dimanissi in Georgia, very famous, very well known. And it's argued that Korolevo is a very, 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 very important archeological junction because it is kind of in that midway point between much earlier sites found in Middle East and Asia and later sites found in Europe. Additionally, if you have seen my other videos on Homo sapien art and Neanderthal art and all that, you'll know my love of looking at a bit of climate change. 1.4 million years ago, we see an interglacial period of warming. Now, this gives us evidence to say that Homo erecti were able to conveniently use these periods of climatic warming to their advantage to move, to migrate, to find greener spaces of abundance and luscious woodland and fairies and bears to eat and caves and the river Danube. And as a result is further evidence for this site being attributed to Homo erectus. Now we are coming to the end of this video. I've given you most of the evidence that I could find. Luckily, although this site is in Ukraine, it has not been harmed in any way. It's quite far to the southwest, so it's really near the, it's really, really near the border. The archaeologist Roman Garber actually visited it in 2022, and he said, although it was overgrown, it had largely been undisturbed. Love it. And that really brings us to the end. That was just a fun little bit of news for you. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you look into it. I hope you found that fascinating and I hope this is a bit of evidence to show the trails of migration led by those that went before us up the Danube. Also, you may have noticed a little bit of a name change and branding change. I decided that flashback is dead to me. I simply thought I have actually no connection to this name. It was just something that I came up with when I first started this channel like three years ago. So it's going to be Yaz likes old stuff from now on. And I stand by that. And I stand by it. So that is all I have to say, really. Yes, thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you have a great week discovering Homo erecti. Up the Danube.